Hello, everybody, and welcome to another coffee conversation. What's funny, Jen? I forgot that we had that. Oh, you forgot we had that vote first. That's how long this has been. But welcome back, and we are back again for another coffee conversation with Richard and Jen. And today, we are really thrilled to have a Ryan Richmond from Eastman Music Company. He's the vice president of Eastman Music Company. It's really exciting for us to have him today. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you. It's fun to be here. Well, I really, really appreciate it. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Eastman? Uh, a little bit about myself. Well, uh, as you said, uh, currently I serve as the vice president of the company, and I'm very honored to be in that role. Uh, we have a, an amazing team uh, full of amazing people. Um, I am a father of three, uh, three daughters. Uh, all of them are in band, um, uh, 14, 11, and 9-year-old. And uh, we have a flutist, a clarinetist, and a bassoonist in our home, um, in that order. My wife of 24 years is a junior high band director, um, so we are kind of a band family, if you, if, you know, uh, if oh, yeah. you can tell by, by what I do in my job and what my wife does in hers uh, and, and our children. Um, so I grew up as a band geek, you know, I, I grew up in a music store. My first job when I got a, when I got a, um, when I got a, uh, a driver's license was to work in a music store. So I've been in the back room of a music store since I was very young, um, uh, in, in the music business. I think this is my 26th year wow. of being in this industry, uh, you know, uh, selling instruments. Um, and now of course making and, and designing and working on that side of it as well so i've just been doing this my whole life i don't think i'm qualified to do much of anything else actually so <laughs> I, I, i'm really fortunate to to be where i'm at because i i don't have any other life skills so um but, forever you know, devoted to band <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, i think we could all say that i mean i i'm oh, yeah. Thing here and yeah it's one of those things where right it's like, yeah where yeah. you get into it and it's, you know it, it's not it's not a bad job right no. the music, the music no. industry is no. great Absolutely. I've, I love what I do. Um, I think it's the most amazing thing. And, and I'm very fortunate to be at Eastman. I, I, you know, when I, when I first took the job, it's been 11 years now that I've been with the company. Um, and I remember uh, when I took the job, um, we didn't have as many band instruments as we do now. You know, it was kind of primarily a string company uh, back in that time. And I remember talking to one of my old colleagues at the music store and he's like, why are you going to work for a string company? He's like, I don't understand. You are such a band guy. Um, you know, we sold strings at the music store, but my, I mean, I was in band. Like, uh, you know, I, I, that's my thing. Um, and he's just like, I don't, I don't get why you, why you're so excited about working here. And I said, well, you know, I met the owner and, and the owner is pretty amazing. And his vision of what he wants Eastman to become is pretty exciting to me. And that's why I wanted to join as a sales manager first. That was my first job with Eastman was a sales manager. And I was assigned the Midwest territory. And then our sales manager in the Northwest was retiring. And they said, you know, you, you're from Utah. You, you were going to move to Indiana, but if you want to stay in Utah, you can take over Terry's territory and we can hire another person for the Midwest. And I thought, you know, that'd be amazing for my children and their cousins and, you know, my wife and her siblings and parents and everything like that. So we could stay in, in Utah. Um, so I took that job. And so, you know, a year or so into my, into my uh, journey with Eastman, I had repped one area and then repped another area. And then they asked me to do some product management um, because we were, you know, our wind instruments were not, as good as they are today, I, I can fairly say. And so they, they said, we'd love for you to do some product management in addition to your, to your territory sales management. I said, okay, I'll take that on. And then I got a different territory in the Southwestern United States and, and still did product management. And then eventually didn't do any, any territory management, any sales management, and just solely focused on product until I had to rep the New England territory. So uh, in my first five years at Eastman, I had ended up repping 30 states in total, uh, being their sales manager and learning, you know, who, who they were. You know, I didn't ever rep um, in certain areas uh, because we had strong, strong sales managers there. Um, but as I kind of grew with the company, um, I repped a lot. And then it was just doing product management and, and 
product management in the beginning days was just collecting all of the complaints. It was like, you know, this doesn't work right. This needs to be better. Why did you guys make it this way? And it was just, you know, being the funnel of all of the data that needed to be collected to make better product. And, um, you know, so I did that for, for the first little while. And then about five years into my employment, um, the owner of the company asked me to serve in, a, in the capacity that I'm, I'm serving now as the vice president of the company and kind of overseeing that product plus, you know, sales plus um, other things. So that's, that's a little bit, you know, Eastman is wonderful. You want to know a little bit about Eastman? We have seven factories globally today now where we make our products and we are the parent company of some truly amazing brands. First being the William S. Haynes uh, Company in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, they make very high quality flutes um, and have for 130 plus years. Uh, the S.E. Shires Company in also the Boston area of Massachusetts where we make uh, really wonderful artist level uh, brass instruments. Uh, the Bakun Musical Services Company in Vancouver, Canada, which not only makes, you know, the best clarinets in the world, but they also own the Lasky uh, Brass Mouthpiece Company that we acquired uh, in 2019. And they make really awesome uh, brass mouthpieces there. And then the Bourgeois Guitar Company in Lewiston, Maine, um, where we make about 400 uh, custom handmade guitars every year. Wow. Um, that are just gorgeous to behold. I mean, these are just works of art that you get to play and uh, a wonderful team everywhere. So we have, we have uh, you know, all of those uh, manufacturing workshops uh, in North America, along with our three that we operate in China, uh, own and operate in China. And, and we make everything from, you know, all of those, all of those products to a full complement of Eastman uh, orchestral strings and guitars and Eastman uh, wind instruments. Yeah, I was looking back when we uh, first just started talking about doing this, about when we came on with Eastman and uh, how long it's been for us. And we actually came in in 2006 is when we came in. And it was strings uh, primarily for us. And But the one thing that I've always been impressed by by your company is the amount of care and the amount of interaction I have with not only the sales people, but the inside people there at Eastman. Rex Spielman, who was my original rep, uh, loved that guy. Um, in fact, I was down in Florida a couple of years ago and we went out to breakfast. And, you know, to have that kind of connection with somebody is just great. And then Corinne and now, and now um, uh, <laughs> Katie. Okay, I mean, you guys hire really good people to do what, what they do. And you really take care of your customer, which in this kind of world that we're living in right now doesn't happen as much as it used to. I mean, I've been doing this for 32 years mm -hmm. and I've seen a lot of things come and go and a lot of things doing different things, but Eastman, yeah. not, not, not just because you're on here. Eastman is actually one of my favorite companies to deal with. Oh, um, thank you. There's never a problem. There's never an issue. Everything just gets taken care of and it's just fantastic. Thank so you. yeah, no, I mean, seriously, I'm not just kind of butter you up because you're here, but yeah. And I know uh, Jen plays Haynes flutes um, and loves those. And yeah. I'm a huge fan. Piccolo, flute, alto, even like it just they they just play so well. And yeah, yeah always recommend. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's it, it's an honor for us. You know the, the and thank you for those kind words. And I love Rex. Like you know, Rex was uh, I learned a lot from Rex. Oh, and, me too. You know, when I was the junior salesman. Uh, I had the the opportunity to to be around these well seasoned um, sales managers and uh, and learn a lot from them. Um, but it you know so, some of the some of the, the the things we look for when we hire people really is are they going to fit in our culture? You know we have a company culture that's more important to us than than pretty much anything. You know um, we are a product driven company, um, but it's about the people first and the products that they play and that they get enjoyment out of and that they, they, you know, uh, live their lives with, you know, a, a musical instrument is one of the most personal items that any person can have, in my opinion, you know, it, it's, you spend more time with this instrument than you do your spouse in some cases. 
Um, you know, it is, it is, you know, it is the pursuit of something great. And, and that product means the world to the people that are buying it and playing it and living with it. And so we take that very seriously, but at the end of the day, it's about people. And our culture is all about that. You know, Chen, uh, the, the culture of our company comes from the top, comes from him. And, uh, I'm, you know, again, just very fortunate to be able to live in that world. Yeah, and you know, going through that that um, that thing you were talking about was growing pains and things like that with different instruments having problems and stuff like that. We um, we actually had an experience where we had some euphoniums that were not good that we were renting, and Chen actually reached out to me and replaced all of them. And I mean, and some of them were a year, year and a half old. And but it didn't okay. matter. It was yeah. let's get you something that works. And it's like yeah. that's crazy. And the and the and the, the way that the the brass instruments have come along um, and the saxophones have come along. I mean, the tuba is just amazing at this point. And that brings us around to like that new Barry sax that you guys have. Um, we've sold several of that model to schools and are just there. Everybody's just thrilled. And I know that you had a big part of doing uh, design and stuff like that on the saxophones. Mm -hmm. So what's going on with those? Well, I assume you're talking about the model 453, right? Yes, the 453, yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah, we, you know, we consider that kind of our performance level product. Mm -hmm. And it's been a really great saxophone. Um, our, our production can not really keep up, actually, with the demand that's come for that instrument, which is really fortunate. You know, it's like, I, I, I have to take a guess on how many do I think we'll sell and let's start building them and we can make this many a month. And, you know, I hope we sell all of them, uh, you know, and then it's like, oh, that's not nearly enough instruments to make. And we're, we're going to, can, can we make more? Um, and, and so that instrument was, it, it was the beginning of a whole series. So when I look at the saxophone line and, you know, if we talk purely about baritone saxophones, when we set out to design a baritone saxophone, it wasn't to design an intermediate or a performance level product, a step-up product, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, or a professional product or a student product. It was to design an acoustic scale for a baritone saxophone and then to use that design to make a top-level professional instrument, a mid-level product that schools would enjoy and eventually make something for beginning students using the same geometry, using the same uh, basic design and making the instruments in a method that would warrant them to be considered professional or intermediate or student quality. And so for next year, um, we're actually releasing three new models of baritone saxophone um, because in the beginning, we made our model of a baritone saxophone and just chose to start with the school purchase one. Let's just begin our manufacturing with this level of baritone saxophone. But all along, we were basically designing uh, uh, our best effort uh, in baritone saxophone, which eventually will be a Rue St. George and a 52nd Street version of that instrument, which is coming out next year. So you'll be able to, to purchase a a Rue St. George model 650 and a 52nd street, a model 652 uh, baritone saxophone from Eastman music company. And they'll both have high F sharps and low A's and they'll both have the design language of each instrument. So the, the baritone will have a rolled style tone hole and it will have a slightly larger bell flare and it will have a different taper in the neck and it'll be unlacquered like the alto and the tenor and the, and the Rue St. George will be, you know, that straight ahead, very traditional, very focused, very centered sound, uh, type of saxophone. Um, but we also decided we should make something that is better for a beginner. And, you know, this is something that kind of doesn't exist anymore, to be honest. If I look at what baritone saxophones are on the market today versus when I was a child, and I'm a saxophonist, so it's kind of like, you know, I take this a little bit more personally than designing a trumpet or something. Um, but as a saxophonist, I remember as a kid, there were student model baritone saxophones and they only went down to B flat and they didn't have high of sharps. And, you know, the, the low A baritone saxophone uh, imports kind of destroyed the market for the American made low B flat student model baritone saxophone. Nobody bought them anymore. And, and I don't think it's that they didn't buy them because they didn't see a purpose or a need for them. They didn't buy them because the imports were less expensive. The imports were less expensive than they had a low A. You get more for less, 
right? Like that was the thinking I think behind it was you got more for less money. And so manufacturers stopped making student model baritone saxophones. They just, they just went away. Nobody makes them. Um, and I, and I thought, you know, I think that there's a need. I really think that somebody will want this, but we have to figure out how to do that. So I, I took a, a 453 baritone saxophone and, and I decided to take a, a saw to it with my buddy Brian in, <laughs> in, in Long Beach. And uh, he and I spent the afternoon taking, you know, essentially a hacksaw. It's called a jeweler's saw. Um, but we, we cut the bell up, you know, we cut the bell into three pieces basically. And we, you know, made some measurements and did all of our research and figured out that we might be able to make a low B flat version of this saxophone and it might work right. Um, so we did, you know, we, we cut it up and we made this prototype and it played really well, actually. I was very pleased with the way, I mean, you know, it looked, it looked, you know, the camping cups that expand, you know, and they've got the different levels. That's what the bell looked like because we had cut it in different places and then soldered it back together. So you had these big bumps where it kind of went up towards the, towards the bell flare. Um, but after that experience, we're like, man, this, there's something here. Like we should, we should really kind of work on this design and, and make a, a factory version of it and see how it plays and see, you know, if we can get it to balance, right. And feel good. It, it just does. It, it, it feels so great actually. And it plays like the old B flat berries, uh, the, the low B flat berry versus the low A berry that we're used to like the older, the older people that play saxophone may have some experience with these instruments because they blow different. They play different. They sound different. Um, and a lot of players that have come by have expressed that they think that this is a great design, student model or not. They would love to own this and play this and use this. So we thought, all right, well, let's make a pro version of it as well at some point. But for this year, we're really looking at middle schools and doublers and marching band and other places where a lighter baritone saxophone might be a really nice thing. You know, if you're a 12 year old sixth grader, Lugging around a low A berry, if you're four foot ten, might be a tr might be a challenge, right? right? So let's let's give them something that's lighter, a little bit more balanced, easier to play, uh, a little bit brighter too. You don't have all that metal there, and you know I was still kind of nervous. We we kind of showed it to our dealer base, showed it at summer Na at the the Nam show in in June, and I and I I'm really really happy that the response was so positive, like. You know, I get texts from my sales manager saying that was the best idea. Everyone's eating this up. Everyone wants to order it on their planning orders. Everyone thinks they're going to rent it, sell it to marching bands, beginning bands. Like everyone thinks it's a, it's a pretty good idea. So I'm pretty happy about that. But that's that's kind of what's coming for baritone saxophones next year. Because that, That's an amazing thing that the company gives you enough strength, you know, enough leash or whatever you want to call it left leeway to be able to cut something up like that to come up with it that that is just an amazing thing well we're a small company and right. um you know the research and development team at the company is not very big right uh, you know i've got some amazing uh colleagues and yeah i mean it is it is a really nice thing that we are kind of that much of a maverick that we can just do sure. these you know whims and see if they work Right. You know, it'd be harder to do at a different company. I totally, yeah. I, I know that. No, we, um, we, we have some of those in order and I've been talking to them to some of our, or road reps know about them. We've talked about the schools. They can't wait to see them. So very excited about that. The whole saxophone line is just incredible. Uh, the Rue St. George stuff is really nice. We have all that stuff in stock. So if anybody's out there and want to come in and see, uh, play those instruments, uh, make sure you stop by and, uh, yeah, they're, they're really fantastic. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, it's a lot of heart put into that whole line. Um, we, it's really close to a lot of us. We've got a lot of saxophone players on staff and a lot of people contribute to this. Um, so it's been, it's been a wonderful team effort. Uh, for this for this product line there they've been really good for us and i know the people that have purchased them have been very very happy with them all the way up and down through the line That's um awesome. yeah it has been great so uh, yeah well no we appreciate you coming on um and hanging out with us for a little bit of time i know you're a busy person and need to get back to your thing i do have one more thing if you wouldn't mind playing a sure. little game of this and that which one do you like better are you ready 
I'm, I'm ready. Okay, so chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Okay. Um, alto sax or tenor sax? Alto sax. Okay. Uh, Newsies or West Side Story? West Side Story. All right, this is the tough one. Blue coats or blue devils? Blue devils. Interesting. I would I would have sent Boston Crusaders. Uh, Bach or Beethoven? <laughs> Oh, see, that's the harder one. I think it depends on your mood. <laughs> right? I yes, mean, it really does. depends on your mood. Yes. That's, that's, that's a very difficult That one. is a difficult one. I'll give, yeah. give you a pass on that one. The last one, uh, Jen or Richard? Ooh, that's harder than Bach or Beethoven. <laughs> I, 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 I think, you, you know, you have to have variety there. I don't you think do. it works with just one. <laughs> All right, it does. All right, we really appreciate you coming to it's see us. It's a perfect right. answer. It is a perfect answer. <laughs> Richard, did you plan that? Did what? you write all this down? Yeah. I love it. You planned yeah. it. Yeah, no, I actually wrote all those down. See, I'm getting better at this. Uh, so, yeah, once again, thank you, Ryan, for coming on with this. Uh, as I said, if you want to see some Eastman stuff, come see us. If you're looking for anything in particular, we actually have tubas in stock, which is fantastic. You know, when we started... When I actually bought the store 11 years ago, we would have like one step up silver trumpet and one maybe step up flute. And that was it. And now we have euphoniums and tubas and a myriad of saxophones. And it's 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 just such a cool place to be. So make sure you stop down. See us. Once again, Ryan, thank you so much. Thank and, you. And uh, join us again for another coffee conversation.